Live from our 7 Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Tom Johnson begins now. A back to school vax blitz is about to kick off as the government works to drive up inoculations in children. A disability advocate has questioned why the government isn't stepping in to enforce a vaccine mandate for staff at Catholic and independent schools. With the start of term in just 10 days, another vaccine blitz is about to begin. With pop-up clinics and walk-in arrangements um, at sites around the state over the next week. 46% of 5 to 11 year olds have received their first dose. Labor is concerned about the government's progress on making sure classrooms are adequate for when students return. Less than 40% of the window upgrades have been completed. Uh, we don't know how many air purification devices have been installed in classrooms. Our aim is to ensure that um, when uh, our learners return to school that they are learning in appropriately ventilated work, uh, uh, spaces. All teachers in state schools must be fully vaccinated by February 8, but a disability lobby group says it'd like to see the same mandate in place for staff at Catholic and independent schools. It doesn't matter if their vaccination rate is 98%. What we need is all children safe in a school environment. And if all school systems are working together to make it safe for all children, then I do not understand why there is no mandate in Catholic education schools. At this stage, we're, we're not considering a, uh, a mandate for those staff. That's a matter for Catholic education. Kristen Desmond has also questioned its decision to only allow online learning for students with medical or educational reasons or those forced to isolate due to COVID. And we're really concerned about those students who might have disabled siblings, so they may not have a medical or an educational reason not to be at school, but they don't want to bring COVID back to their family because there is a real risk there. Today, the state recorded 594 cases and another death, a woman in her late 80s. Ten people are being treated for the virus in hospital, including one person in ICU. Letitia Wallace, 7 Tasmania News. The man behind Tasmania's famous Penny Royal site has died after a battle with cancer. Roger Smith relocated from the UK to Scamander in the 1960s before creating the popular tourist attraction in Launceston from scratch I'd in 1972. After the end of this coming year, at the beginning of 85, there really wouldn't be very much more we can do. I dare say we'll go to other places then, but at this stage I'd say that was about as far as we can go. It'll be perfect then. He thought, I have a wonderful idea to move this convict-built water mill to Launceston. So he did it, and he moved it stone by stone. A very courageous businessman and a very strong businessman. And I'm incredibly proud of him as his wife. Um, and I hope his spirit lives on here. Mr Smith was also instrumental in rebuilding the West Coast Wilderness Railway. He was 84. A Launceston brewery has been able to kickstart its new business venture after receiving a government grant. Decane Brewing Co was a successful recipient in the Building Project Support Program. $400,000 was provided to the brewery to begin restoring the aged Elizabeth Street building which will be transformed into a multi-million dollar dining and craft beer tourism experience. So we've uh, already uh, redone the roof uh, as you can see. Um, so just in the initial stages of construction, but it's yeah, helped to fast track that. A total of 32 projects across the state have been supported through the $25 million program. History has been made this morning as the RSV Noyenia docked in Hobart to complete its maiden voyage. Australia's Antarctic scientists say travelling on the multi-million dollar icebreaker is already proving to be a game changer for exploration. From being among the icebergs thousands of kilometres away to the iconic Hobart waterfront this morning, Noina's inaugural journey was complete. It's been a long voyage and um, you know it's been challenging with a new vessel and, and all of the issues that go with that but uh, we managed to successfully get all of the mission completed. A returning home to stock up and refuel after 38 days carving through the icy continent. Deploying helicopters and delivering fuel to research stations were among the tasks for expeditioners. The excitement amongst the expeditioners at those Antarctic stations is, was really um, palpable, yeah. A 55 kilometre long glacial canyon along the way, a pleasant surprise for scientists with enhanced technology on board supporting the discovery. 
It's like the Aurora Australis on steroids, really. Like everything is just so much bigger. It's it's much more complex. The seafloor was mapped throughout the voyage, allowing for the capture of unique Antarctic krill. With a moon pool to lift the waters of the Southern Ocean directly to the laboratory so the scientists can study the krill and what they're up to in real time. The ship will remain docked for now, but the Australian Antarctic Division and Serco crew are already preparing for their second voyage to Davis and Macquarie Island in early February. Not so much science on this voyage, just uh, managing shift people around and get a bit of cargo supplied to those stations. They hope this is the start of good things to come. The ship's made a really, really solid start to its, uh, to its uh, program with the Australian Antarctic Division and uh, I think the future is looking pretty bright. Grace Evans, 7 Tasmanian News. Tasmanians have worked up a sweat to raise money for the families involved in the Hillcrest Primary School tragedy. More than 120 people signing up for the We Work Out for Hillcrest Challenge. Participants were required to exercise over six kilometres and post a picture on social media. Organisers say they've been heartened by the support from locals. We've had people just from creating the Instagram account that have seen us post things that have then messaged and went, hey, you know, I'm a personal trainer or I'm a gym and we want to get involved. It's just really beautiful seeing everyone getting out and moving their body and also raising funds. People can still enter the challenge until midnight. A Tasmanian beach has been named among the nation's best. The neck on Brulee Island. Bruni Island came in at number six on the top 20 list by Tourism Australia. A social media favourite, the spot was recognised for its unique nature with a stretch of sand that connects the north and south Bruni Islands. The list hopes to inspire tourism as the industry looks to rebound after coronavirus restrictions. Hobart has been spoiled for choice on the penultimate day of the Mona Foma Festival. One event at Town Hall paying tribute to the humble organ. More than 40 were on display with the public invited to play the instrument. The sounds produced will be used for a new album. Notions of accessibility, um, the openness of music, not being virtuosic, and then um, I guess the role of chance in um, we can't control what people do in here. Meanwhile, Terrapin Theatre was taking the idea of an all-day breakfast to new areas. Using metal poles, a single puppeteer showcased the frustrations of cooking over a seven-hour period. There's a lot of mistakes, uh, a lot of spillage, um, but it is a really sort of inclusive work um, that brings people along on the journey. The festival wraps up tomorrow night. The Jack Jumpers have taken to My State Bank Arena in unusual circumstances, playing an away game on their home court. Facing the New Zealand Breakers, they got off to a flyer, racing to a nine-point lead early in the match. The Breakers kept in touch, but Tasmania would lead by 10 at the first change. A short time ago, the Jack Jumpers were in front by 23 points, nearing three-quarter time. Good evening. 29 was the state's top today in Launceston, Hobart 23, 22 in Burnie and 21 in Devonport. Temperatures reaching 23 across Lowhead and Lyoweenie, Strawn 24 and 27 in Grove. On the close-up shows mid to low level cloud to the east and west of Tasmania. Further out, mid to high level cloud associated with thunderstorms sits over southern New South Wales and across South Australia. Tomorrow shows a weak high pressure system move across Tasmania ahead of a approaching cold front. Northeast to southeast winds tomorrow 10 to 20 knots swells up to 3 metres in the west and south and below 1 metre in the north. Tomorrow's forecast now Hobart 25, sunny in Dover, 31 in Ouse. In the north, Launceston reaching 30, humid and partly cloudy across Devonport and Scottsdale. Burnie and Stanley tomorrow, 23, mostly sunny in Strawn. 24 across St Helens and Swansea and humid and partly cloudy in Ross. The UV forecast is reaching extreme 11s across the state. Looking ahead to the three-day forecast now, Tuesday showers about the west and north extending statewide. Wednesday showers about the west central areas and southeast coast. And Thursday showers about the west and southeast coast clearing in the evening. Capital cities 34 and mostly sunny in Perth tomorrow. Possible showers in Sydney and 30 in Melbourne.
And currently Hobart 21 and sunny, Launceston 24 and Devonport 20 and sunny. That's all in weather tonight, Tom. Thank you once again, Jackie. And that's all from the news team tonight.